This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news, stay for informed conversations. The Supreme Court has delivered a landmark ruling in the federal government's suit seeking financial autonomy for local governments. The lead judgment read by Justice Emmanuel Agim stated that monies meant for local governments should now be paid directly into their exclusive accounts and that it is a breach of the 1999 constitution for state governments to dissolve democratically elected local government executives. Now joining us to discuss the implications of this ruling is Dayo Ajibola. Mr. Ajibola is a former secretary of Akinyele local government in Oyo State. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the conversation. Oh, good morning, please. Good to have you here. Uh, what can you, you? What is your reaction, essentially, to the ruling of the Supreme Court on uh, this financial autonomy for local governments? Okay. My reaction to the ruling of the Supreme Court on the financial autonomy of the local government is simple. It gladdens the heart. This is the, 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 the best thing that can happen to Nigerian democratic platforms. And uh, as it is today, the Nigerian people, the Nigerian masses, and the local government should be happy and celebrate President Tinubu for facilitating President Tinubu's government, led by his Antony General, for facilitating this. This is a welcome development, and uh, I wish that uh, other aspects of the autonomy are also addressed, because this is simply financial autonomy. Mm. There are other things that should be addressed uh, for, for the autonomy to stand in the real context of it. Mr. Jibola, state governors, current and even past governors, are speaking against this ruling. In fact, the Adama state government has decided that it might take this matter to court. How do you react to this? And what do you expect, for instance, uh, Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State to do? I Well, I, I wouldn't expect them not to react in that in that way, in that trap. The local government has been where they are doing the biggest corruption in Nigeria. You see, the fight against anti corruption has just been won by 50% with this ruling, with this financial autonomy. The local government has been torn, has become for long a while, for a very long time, the meeting point, you know, the, the meeting engine where all the governors of Nigeria are, you know, getting their funds from. They, 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 they made the local government to be redundant. The people at the local government, the civil servants, the politicians, even the political office holders at the local government are irrelevant in the scheme of things as it is as of today. But with this ruling, they are on their, they are terribly in a in a quagmire. And that is why some of us, my me, I personally, am of the view that the federal government should go a step further apart from this financial autonomy. There are, should be an act enshrined in our constitution to criminalize the portion of local government. What am I saying? Section 308 gave all the governors immunity. We should go ahead and amend Section 308 to include that any attempt for any governor to touch financial economy, that is when its immunity clause will be suspended and it will be investigated, broke. And anything that happens to normal human beings will happen to him. Section 308 of the Nigerian Constitution should be amended now. You know, in furtherance of deepening democracy at the local government level, vis a vis, amending me to be the exception to the rule that once a governor touches the uh, local government money or anybody connected to the local government vis a vis the director of finance, Director of the Director of Work, HLA, and the local government. Mr. They should all be made to be prosecuted along with the governor. So, Mr. 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 Jibola, covering the governor should be suspended and should be uh, should be should be should, an extension, extension rule should be created to with the section TBO8 such that governor's immunity loses their immunity once they touch his uh, funds. Of the local government. Now, Thank Mr. Ajibola, if, if I may, there, there are suggestions that the states should stop being in charge of conducting local government elections. Now, if this happens, how would it impact local government autonomy? Well, the states should not have the issue of the need to be conducting the local government election. Because what we don't even have local government election, that's the truth. 
Nobody, any reasonable politician that knows his own, that knows what he's doing, will never go and contest election at the local government because it is written, like we say in Yoruba, in my part of the world, the battle. They say, I call him. We will write it. That is what they do. They will just write names and say, This is the election. And there's nothing you can do. Go to Supreme Court, nothing can happen. The INEC should be uh, guided to conduct local government elections. A section of INEC should be created for. Uh, should be should be carved out for strictly conducting local government elections, you know, and uh, the National Assembly to address the organogram of the local government mm. because as it is today, the organogram of the local government is not going to hate this coming development, this autonomy that is coming. You don't expect a, a school start fail out to become a local government chairman. When a school start fail out, you becoming a local government chairman. And is sitting on a budget of 250 million, 500 million, as the case may be. What do you expect of such local government? Well, Look at the hierarchy of the civil servant and the local government. You have HLA that have some of them have PhD. You have director of works that have PSC, MSC, and what have you, Korean certified. You have, uh, what's it called? Director of all the directors. Most of them are like three, four degrees older at the local government level. Then you have the local the chairman of the local government, who is supposed to be the political head of the local government, having a school start fill out. Is total and tema to the development of this country. We Mr. cannot continue in that gap. We Mr. cannot. It is, stupid, it is naive. It is an progress of the people. So I, I do apologize for the interruption. Unfortunately, time won't allow us to go further. But you know what? This is one step. And let's see what happens in terms of deliberations going forward. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and your thoughts on the matter. This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news. Stay for informed conversations.